This week we're going to take a look at path effects available in MetPy. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. Last week we introduced the new release of MetPy, and now we're going to start looking at some of the handy features that are in that release. And for one, it's path effects to be able to draw fronts. And it's not just warm and cold fronts, there are a bunch of path effects. So we're going to take a look at what they are, and what they look like, and then we'll show you how to plot those onto a map. So first, we're going to have our imports, import map plot lib, dot pi plot, since we're going to be making plots as plt, and import numpy as mp. Next, we're going to actually import the path effects that we're going to use, and there are a lot. You can find these in the docs, but we're going to have a cold front and a warm front, those we might expect. There's a scalloped stroke. There's cold frontogenesis, and then there's the opposite of that cold frontolysis. There's a dry line, warm frontogenesis, and warm frontolysis. All right, we've got an occluded front. And you guessed it. Except we need to spell that correctly there. Occluded frontogenesis. Occluded frontolysis. We've got a ridge axis. We have a squall. A stationary front. stationary frontogenesis and stationary frontolysis. So we're looking at 16 different path effects that are now available for you to use to draw on your maps. And what you'll probably find out is after typing frontogenesis and frontolysis that many times, you probably have at least one spelling error. We're going to go ahead and copy this whole block I want to make a list of the different path effects. And this is just to save us some work when we're writing our plot code. Because what I want to do is plot all of these and let's see what they look like. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to make an X ray, an array representing the X positions, that is. Let's say 0 and 10, and y is going to be an array of value 1 and 1. So this would be a straight line parallel to the x-axis of our plot. Now I'm going to create a figure and an axis object using plot.subplots. Go ahead and specify a figure size of 8 by 8. And now I'm going to write a loop for i, comma, effect, meaning for i and effect, using this unzipping syntax in enumerate effects. So what that's going to do is iterate through each item in effects, and enumerate will assign a zero indexed number to that, and then this will unpack it so the zero index number is an i, and the effect is an effect. I call axe.plot x, y times i, and path effects. Remember, path effects is a list, because so you can apply multiple, is going to be an instance of effect. Now, you can see why I did that enumerate, is we're going to get first y of 1, then y of 2, then y of 3. So we'll have all of these on one plot, increasing in y. And if we do that, there they all are. 
That's great. That's not an incredibly useful plot for us. Sure, you probably recognize what all of these are and what they mean, but maybe we want to label them because these numbers don't really have any meaning. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to call set y ticks to be numpy a range, the length of our effects list. So that's going to put a tick next to every one of these y values. Then we're going to set y tick labels to be our effect dunder name. And actually we're going to need to do this as a list comprehension here. So we'll call it e dunder name for e in effects. So what that's going to do is go through every effect in effects and get the dunder name attribute and we'll make that a list and then we're going to set the y tick labels to be that list. And finally, the x ticks don't mean anything to us. So we're going to set x ticks to be an empty list. Now you'll notice I assigned the returns of these to underscore, which is our throwaway variable, just so we don't see a bunch of things printed out here in the notebook. And there we go. So now we have no tick label or no tick marks on the x axis. We have a tick mark for every path effect on the y, but we've replaced the numeric value of that label with the name of what that path effect is called. So you can see there's our stationary frontolysis, our stationary frontogenesis, and so on. So just having this as a reference can be really useful to remind you what different path effects are available to you now in MetPy. But let's go ahead and plot it on a map. We're going to plot some fake fronts for now, and then we'll look at some ways that we can get data on real fronts and plot real frontal data. I'm going to import cartopy.crs as ccrs because we know we're going to need coordinate reference systems for a map. Import cartopy.feature as cfeature so we can put countries, states, and so on. And that should be about all we need. We're going to create our coordinate reference system. It's going to be the Lambert conformal. And we're going to have a central longitude of minus 100 and a central latitude of 45. I'll go ahead and create my figure, plot.figure. Fig size, let's go ahead and make it something that works out nice for Conus, 17 by 12. X is fig.add subplot, so yet another way that we can create axes on a figure. One row, one column, first plot, and the projection is our CRS that we've specified. We can set the extent of this to be some nice numbers for Conus. And then we can add features. So we'll add the feature of C feature dot coastline. And we'll go ahead and just as a reminder, you can use with scale to get different scales. We'll use 1 to 50 million. We'll make that in a half line width. We're going to add states. And we'll use a half line width for that as well. And finally, we'll add borders. And use a half line width there. I'm going to plot some text at minus 100 longitude, 43 latitude. It's going to be an L to mark a low. And by convention, we're going to make that red. We'll make it relatively large. And we'll align it horizontally and vertically centered at those coordinates. Now, if we just do this, we're not going to get the letter we expect, because remember, we need to apply a transform. We are giving these coordinates in latitude and longitude, which is plat curry. 
not in the coordinate reference system of Lambert conformal. Okay, so let's just make sure that that's working so far. So our map works and we've got our low plotted. Now we're just going to use a few points to define these fronts. So they're gonna look a little jagged, but this way you see how to apply path effects and then we'll look at how we can get some real frontal data later. I'm gonna plot a front in X or in longitude, minus 100, minus 99, minus 99, minus 100, minus 101. For Y, it's gonna be 42, 40, 36, 33, and 30 degrees of latitude. Then we need to specify our path effect. Path effects is a list, and our list contains an instance of cold front. Again, we need to specify a transform of ccrs.platcurry because we're giving these in latitude and longitude. We'll do the same thing for a warm front at minus 99, minus 94, minus 90, minus 85, minus 80 for longitude, and for latitude, 43, 43 and a half, 43, 40, and 37. The path effects are a list. It's a warm front instance. And again, the transform is platkuri. So there we go. We have our crude version of, well, cold and warm fronts around a low on a map. So this is a great new feature of MetPy, and it's not just cold and warm fronts. It's all of those 16 path effects that we looked at. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.